Welcome to How We Met. I'm Cheryl Stritch, and every month we'll be meeting with couples from Laguna Woods who tell their story about how they met. Today in the studio we have two couples, and the first two couple, the first couple are Beth and John Perrick. Now, I have some really strong feelings about John because he brought me into show business. How can, you know, how can I not love him? And Beth is on several boards. She's on Village Community Fund. She's on um, Thrive and she's on the um, foundation. Um, we have to thank Beth for all the work she does in our community. But what's really neat about them, they've just started a new club called the Storytelling. Is it a club? A Storytelling Club. And um, John, you want to tell me anything about it? You have a, one minute. One minute. OK, <laughs> well, Beth and I went to a big festival uh, earlier this year, and it was a, for the Southern California Storytellers. And we were so impressed with it that I said, why don't we do this in the village? And that's how it came together. And we had our first meeting. And uh, here we are in progress. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's going to be great. I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> so here are my questions. Where are you guys from? We're both. We're from originally, do you want to know, or now? It's fine. We moved here from Granada Hills. I'm originally from Canandaigua, New York. It's That's right. one of the Finger Lakes. It's right. a small town in the Finger Lake area. And I'm originally from Chicago. Okay. And that's where I got my start in show business. Oh, that's right. I didn't mention that you are a professional actor. <laughs> <laughs> um, and how, um, how long have you been in Laguna Woods? We moved here 16 years ago. We got married and moved to Laguna Woods, and we love it here. <laughs> and how long have you been a couple? 17 years. 17. We started dating 17 years ago. All right. We didn't waste any time. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you go. OK, so why don't you tell your story? How did you meet? Well, we were neighbors. Um, and I knew Darlene, his wife, because we would meet in the grocery store. We both had boys who played football, and we needed lots of groceries to feed those boys. Every day. <laughs> yes, and then um, John's daughter was on a baseball little league team with my middle boy. And so I got to see her with mom things at the little league field. And we were in the same church, so I knew Darlene quite a bit. But I rarely saw John because he was an actor, so he was Gone. I knew he was an actor, but and I kind of knew what he looked like, but I didn't really know him until his son, John, was looking at different colleges. Best first husband, Foster, was a football coach at USC. Oh. And my son was a very, very talented football player, and he was recruited all over the country, including by her husband for SC. John decided to go to the University of Colorado. <laughs> so, but that's how we, I first really got to meet Beth and talk to her and so on and so forth. Um, and, but then after that, as time went on, um, we were in Bible study together and uh, we, our, our relationship got closer as friends. Uh, how did that happen? You were both? In with, the same church. And you were both widowed? Not, Not yet. yet. Oh. Not yet. We were oh. in Bible study. Darlene oh. and John were in Bible study with me. Okay. And we both belonged to the same parish. Okay. And I enjoy talking with Darlene. She's, you know, moms. And right. this one night we were talking about dresses, and I was saying, my daughter is getting married in a year, and I know I have to have the mother of the bride dress. And I hate buying dresses anyway. And then mother of the bride dress, oh, no. And we were commiserating. And that night. And that night afterwards, they had, they had a lot of fun. They were laughing and so on and so forth. Darlene and I went home. And we used to have like ice cream before we went to sleep. And we had ice cream. And we got in bed. And we were, we were laughing and having a good time. And at 3 o'clock in the morning, she had a massive heart attack. And um, she only lived for a week. We took her off the life support because we had both wanted that. And um, she died within a week. And 
the, it was, she was totally fine at the uh, study that night and everything. It's just a massive surprise. I'm and so, so because it was such a surprise, the funeral, John was obviously just absolutely devastated, you know, 40 years married to this woman, and, and his children were devastated. We did bring food to the home. We did, my daughter and I, you know, commiserated or did things that neighbors would do, but I would see him um, in church and lecture um, when we had um, lecture duty together and whatnot. And so I decided when I was a widowed several years before that, and oh. I was on a research team, I, I taught in a university, and I was on a research team, and one of my research team members was um, the head of Ed Psych and Counseling, and he had lost his wife. And so what he did with me was he didn't say, well, how, tell me about how you feel about that or whatever he might have said in a professional manner. He'd just say, so Beth, how's Chris doing now that his dad's not there helping him with whatever? Right. And he just kind of went around and gave me a chance to talk. And I thought, I wonder if John needs a chance to talk to right. somebody. Right. And so I called and invited him to dinner. I was a nervous wreck. I mean, I hadn't been out with a man other than my husband for 38 years, you know, and I was so worried. And so I had to be driving. I had to be in charge because I was concerned. We ended up in a Chinese restaurant. Oh, you didn't, you didn't go to your house for dinner? No. Oh. Out a Chinese restaurant. And and so she was allowing me to talk and tell him, you know, how I felt inside. And I screwed up the whole dinner because I cried. I cried all through this dinner. And then when we went home, I said, I'm so sorry that I, you know, you took me out for dinner and I screwed it up by crying, so I owe you a dinner. So we went out a second time, and I was Did you cry that time? And I cried that time, <laughs> I did. Uh, but then after that, we continued to see each other occasionally. I mean, we weren't, we didn't think we were really dating, and so we saw each other pretty much the same until... Until it got to be September, and... When did it all start? Um... No, I don't May, know, May oh, June, oh, okay. somewhere right. in there. So now we're in September. And yeah. yes, and so we were dating more and not traveling places with our kids for the summer. And this one night I said when we were out to dinner, are we dating? And John said, I don't know, but I think maybe. Maybe we are dating, yeah. <laughs> and actually what was happening was we were falling in love. So this was September, and I could feel that I was falling in love. In November, I had to attend a conference in, Ch in China oh. um, with, uh, for, my, for my university. And John decided he was going to send me flowers. She was in Beijing, so I called up. Um, it was a kind of an exotic hotel. I can't remember the name of it at this point, but... I call up their main office in, in um, San Francisco, and I said, I want to send flowers to your hotel in Beijing. And the woman said, really? And I, I said, yes, really. And uh, she said, well, we haven't done that quite a bit. I said, are you, you are a hotel, right? She says, yes. <coughs> I said, what do you mean you haven't done So it was hemming and awing. She said, call our office in Chicago. So I did, and I got kind of the same thing. And I was very frustrated. So I called, um, what was it, Flowers Are Us or one of those? Pro Flowers or something. Something like that. Like that. And I said, can you send flowers to Beijing? Oh, yeah, no problem. I know. And I said, well, I have this little lady friend, and I want to send her a big, big, nice bouquet and so on and so forth. He said, that's great. What's the address? I gave him. And um, so they send it to her, and then I talked to Beth afterwards, and she told me about how she got the flowers. <laughs> I walked in the room and said, enormous bouquet <laughs> of yellow, all yellow flowers. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I said, there's got to be somebody else's 
you know, wrong room. You know, and I looked at the card and it said, I love you, oh. Lan. Lan. Oh. China. <laughs> Lan. Lan. John. And, oh, it's John sending me flowers. And, uh, that was funny. <laughs> so, so um, that was November. And then over the holidays, we decided to go to Texas and visit John's son and his wife and go to the Gold Rush Country because John had never seen the Gold Rush Country. And so we had a really good time over the holidays. And then it was Valentine's Day. It was Valentine's Day, so I <laughs> thought, what a better time than to get engaged. So we went, and we were looking at rings and so on and so forth. Finally, we went to the jewelry mart, and I found this beautiful, beautiful antique wedding ring. And so I said, how do you like this? She said, I love it. So I said, good. So I bought it, and I told the woman who was selling this to us that it was our, our engagement. And she looked at, of course, at us and our age, and she said, oh, well, then I have to take a picture. Get down on your knees and propose to her. Yes, it's in the up? store, <laughs> right? So I said, okay. So I got down on my knees. She took the picture, and I got back up, and she said, I screwed up. Do it again. She took my picture three times with me getting on my knees in the, in the jewelry store. And I said, that's enough. And, um, but it resulted in some couple watching that whole thing. And he decided to buy his wife a ring. Oh. <laughs> I mean, if you got down on your knees now, could you get up? No. <laughs> Good thing it happened 16 years ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was like three times up and down in the store. And people went OK, so at. we're going to be wrapping up in a, little, in a, a minute and a half. However, how many kids are there between you guys? We have five. Five children, 11 grandchildren. Oh, Wonderful. And do you yeah. ever all get together? It's really yeah, hard right. to. We really hard to. Seldom do we. But um, and especially because one lives in Texas right. and so it's harder right. to get him. Right. But anyway, we see the kids in a lot Good. with eleven grandchildren. <laughs> the oldest is a junior at USC and the youngest just started kindergarten. Listen, you guys, this has been great. I now know more things about you, John, than I ever knew before. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to really thank you both for coming on because it's my pleasure. And thank you so much. Thank you for having and, us. And it's our pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Well, next up, we have Lynn and Dennis Nicholson. Um, I want to thank you guys for being here today. Dennis is a very happy golfer. <laughs> <laughs> and Lynn is my friend at the Saddle Club. She's the president of the Saddle Club. And um, I don't know where that club would be without her. Oh. <laughs> you got anything to tell me, Lynn? I do. Um, we are an active club at the Saddle Club, and we raise funds for the horses through events. And we have one coming up uh, October 15th. There are flyers in... What is it? Well, it's a concert. and it's, What kind of concert? Well, I've, heard, actually, it, I've heard it might be a country western. A bit, yes. Okay. And there will be line dancing, even lessons. Oh, uh, lessons they start, too? Yeah, they start out... <laughs> yep. The lessons start out the beginning of the evening, and then they'll be interspersed throughout the evening so people can sit down for a while or, and then come back and try out what they just learned. And um, it's going to be fun. They're um, great musicians, the Moonshiners, and they're, uh, well, they have a lot of energy and they really get the, the group going. Uh, one, last, one last thing. Okay. I know that this is a benefit for the horses. Is, it is. Tell me one thing that you got, that you do, that you've bought for the horses um, through the Saddle Club. Because as I understand it, any profit that you make, any money that, that is raised is going to go to the benefit of the horses. It does. Um, we have, uh, most recently, we purchased 18 fans to be mounted on the walls that face into the... Um, stalls 
and cool the horses off. It gets pretty hot down there. Boy, this summer those horses <clears throat> must have really appreciated yes. that. And uh, also we bought a couple of the shade covers for the horses and we buy... Um, and was this money raised from the last concert? The last concert was our most um, profitable event we've ever put on. Uh, we had a full house that night and people really had a good time. Well, and this time it'll be I hope that, even better. I hope that we have you, that we at the Saddle Club have that kind of breakout. But let's we get on to more oh, important things. Oh, okay. <laughs> so where are you guys from? I'm originally from Ohio. I moved here in 1989 and moved to Pasadena. I worked in downtown Los Angeles. As what? Oh, I was a court reporter in federal court. Okay, okay. And what about you, Dennis? I was a military family. We moved everywhere. Oh. And I moved here to California uh, and when I was a senior in high school. We lived over in Simi Valley, and then we lived in Thousand Oaks, and then we lived in Camarillo, all within a space of nine months as my parents are deciding to which house they wanted to buy. So does that, does that mean three high schools in senior year? Two high schools in oh. senior year. Oh. <laughs> and my history, I tell people, from Kindergarten through 12th grade, I went to 16 different schools and only three times that I actually started to finish in the same school. That's how much we moved. So I, I was used to it. Okay. All right. Okay. Next question. How okay. long have you been in the community? We moved here in 2017. Um, we are now in our fourth house here in Laguna Woods. We initially moved here, didn't know if we'd like it, so we rented for six months, uh, decided we liked it very much, and we purchased home. Um, wasn't the right home for us. We have dogs and we needed a courtyard. So um, that we sold our house during COVID, and unfortunately we couldn't find another house. And so um, we rented again for another six months, and then we found the home we live in now, and we're there to stay. So you're, oh. we're seeing <laughs> pictures of you guys coming up. Yeah. St. Patrick's Day, obviously. <laughs> Thanks so much for sending these pictures. Sure. <laughs> and I guess the answer that people are going to find out, in fact, that, that we're not seeing really younger pictures is because how long have you guys been a couple? Well, we've been married 15 years. And we dated, what, maybe a year and a, a half. Year, yeah. So you're newlyweds. <laughs> well, relative. By comparison to some of the people here, I guess right. we are. Right, yeah. right. So you've been a couple for, you've been married for 15 years. We have. All right. Now, oh, is that your wedding picture? It yeah. is. <laughs> and that's our little dog, Mochi. Um, she, she was at the wedding. And um, you can see she's all dressed up. She, <laughs> all right. So let's get into it. How did you meet? Uh, we were a fix-up. We had a mutual friend who thought we'd be perfect together. And actually, neither one of us wanted to meet the other one. A, a little background. I was widowed in 2002. And this was a friend that had worked with my late wife. And I had any contact with her for a few years. And then we kind of, well, let's catch up on old times. And uh, so we had talked. And I went home, and I didn't think, and she calls up about 30 minutes later, and she says, I've got the woman for you. And I went, whoa, 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 whoa. She said, call her right now. Had you dated before? Uh, no, I didn't met her. We no, didn't. no, 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 no. Had you dated anyone Oh, else? I had dated some. Okay. I've been widowed for several okay. years, but I did not have anybody in my life. And so uh, she calls up, and I said, well, I'll call her. Then I find, I'm living in, living in Ventura. She lived in Pasadena. And she said, you've got to call her. So we uh, started talking on the phone, and we decided to meet at a midpoint, which we decided was the Reagan Library in Simi Valley. So I get there at the time, and she's not there. Where were you? <laughs> well, I was stuck in traffic from the Amgen bicycle race, <sighs> and I was trying to get from Pasadena to the library, and, and nothing was moving. And he had given me his home number only, not his cell number, oh. so I couldn't call him. And <laughs> <laughs> here's the cute part. So I'm waiting and I'm looking. And I knew had an idea of what she looked like, but I hadn't seen her in person. And so I, well, what happened? <laughs> Did I get stood up? And so I'm waiting. And then I go, no, she that one's, you know. And finally, 
then she doesn't know what I look like, and she arrives, and we're kind of like looking around, and <laughs> are you, and she goes, are you Dennis? I go, are you Lynn? And yay! <laughs> so we met. Well, he came up and stood behind me. We were at the, I don't know who all has been to the Reagan Library, but anyway, there's a fountain out front, and so we decided to meet at the fountain, and there were people all around. It was a Saturday. It was crowded. <laughs> And so I just stood there, and he came around. I, I thought, I hope that's him. And he was walking around, and he was behind me. And I turned around, and I said, are you Dennis? How long did you wait for her? Oh, 45 minutes to an hour. Oh. I was really late. <laughs> so what happened after that? Mm, well, we had a nice afternoon. And then, uh, I don't. I took her picture, which I still have. Yeah, he took my picture. Did so we get it? Not on no, that one. No, not that one. I, I don't even know where that picture is. Uh, I still have it. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, um, you know, we just saw each other. It started out, we saw each other every couple weeks, and we took turns going back and forth. I'd go to Ventura. Ha I, help me with this, because I'm from New York and Southern, Northern California. Oh, Southern okay. California. I don't know that area. How long, oh. how far apart are you? Oh, uh, it's about an hour and a half. Okay. Without traffic. It all depends. Th yeah. That's the key word in Southern California, okay. traffic. <laughs> yeah. So we would, you know, um, one Sunday I drive up to Ventura and he'd show me around and, you know, I met his family and everything. And then he'd come to Pasadena and I'd show him around. <laughs> and, um, then it got more frequent every weekend. Uh, pretty much we would see each other. Mm -hmm. Were you both working near where you lived? Uh, I was working in downtown Los Angeles. And and I, I was working in Oxnard, but I lived in, you know, they're okay, side so by you side. Were, so you were not far yeah. from where both of you worked and yeah. lived. All near right, yeah. Area. Oh. So it was a bit of a commute to see each other. So how long did this go on? Mm -hmm. A little over a year. year and a half, year. Yeah, something then, like that. Then what changed? Well, um, I re it was very romantic. I will always remember <laughs> it. You probably don't even reman remember. But anyway, uh, it was football season, and I was learning to like pro football because he liked to watch football. And so I started, you know, watching, and I thought, I kind of like this. So it was during a pro football game, and he was out in the kitchen, it was in the evening, it was dark, and he was out in the kitchen, and I walked out there, and he put his arms around me, and he said, um, I don't want to date anymore. I want you to be my wife. And, and you don't remember? Oh, you remember. Oh. <laughs> and I was really surprised, really surprised. And so... Um, you hadn't expected it? No. I, I mean, we were a couple. We had great times together, but I hadn't really thought it through. I had always been single. I, this is my first and only marriage. And so, you know, I just didn't, I wasn't on that wavelength, kind of. So what'd you say? Well, I asked him if I could think about it. <laughs> and he said, sure, he was so nice. He said, sure. So then um, the next morning, uh, I went to church, and he played basketball with his friends on Sunday mornings. And so we went our separate ways, and then we met back up at his house, and then I told him I thought about it, and I'm, I'm in. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, and then that was in the fall, and we decided not to say anything to anybody until after the first of the year. Wow. And a couple weeks later, it was Thanksgiving, and he announced at the dinner table <laughs> that we were engaged. Yeah. Wow. And, yeah. And so then we got married the following May. So with Dennis came two children? Two, two grown sons. sons. And how many grandchildren? Three girls who are women now. Oh, my. So that, he came with a package. He did. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. He sure did. But, you know, it's... The complexities and ups and downs of life. That's true. You know, That's you never true. know. A, a, a related but unrelated, uh, Laguna Woods. Right. I graduated from Cal State Fullerton just up the road. Right. I came down here, uh, I think my senior year, to Leisure World. Oh. 
to study the voting patterns of senior citizens. I was 20 or 21, and they were full of old people that were 60. Now, when you're 20 <laughs> right. and 60 in those days was old, right. and 50 years later, I live here. Right. <laughs> so you never know how the world's going to come That's around. Right. That's right. And this was when Orange County was pretty wide open, Irvine, right. and right. there was actually orange groves here then. I know. I lived here then. Yes. So things have changed yes. a tad. Yes. I lived, I lived in Mission Viejo before there was Aliso Viejo. Oh. oh. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, guys, I loved having you on. Um, this has been really great. And for people at home, come to Lynn's concert on October 15th. It's going to be great. Yes, it's going to be an evening of fun. Fun. Anyway, thanks fun. very much. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you very much. This has been great. And the rest of the pictures are going to be up oh, okay. <laughs> once PJ edits. Okay. All <laughs> so right. thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to come on to the show, email us at lwvcouples at gmail.com, include your name, phone number, and email address, and a brief description of your story.